Hi everyone! Welcome to the Jewel Writers Archive. I'm Ronnie, and I am just waiting for my co-host Chris. We're going to be enjoying the Jewel Writers finale. Hi everyone! Hi. Welcome to the Jewel Writers Archive. I'm just waiting for my co-host Chris. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> uh, I have it on. Um, I have it on the background. Yeah. And it's my cousins. Hi. <laughs> You can see me? Hello! Hi, everyone! We're just waiting for... We're waiting for Chris. Here he... Oh, wait. Okay, let's see. Fantastic! Hi, Chris! Hello! <laughs> Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, I'll be admitting more people as we get started, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be watching the finale of Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders. Um, however, we're going to be listening to the Starla audio, so feel free to um, commentate as we watch this. So, Chris, if you want to go ahead and get started, and then we will basically go from there. Yeah. Oh, okay, sounds good. So if you haven't seen the episode leading up to the one jewel, you need to make sure to watch the Spirit of Avalon to know kind of what happens. Because I know you're sitting on the edge of your seats waiting to find out. <laughs> Who's so sitting on the edge of their too. seat? <laughs> I think that Jan and Shell are sitting on the edge of their seats. Lisa already knows what's going to happen. <laughs> You know, I've been waiting. Yeah. You've been waiting. You've been waiting 25 years to celebrate the anniversary. I take it this was better quality than the Guinevere version that you had. Right, yeah, because actually just who joined us, we have Stormy to thank for the only Guinevere audio that's in existence of this episode. So I just, I thought that this had better audio. Yeah. It definitely feels better. Yeah. We have to go to the center of the wild magic and get this staff to Merlin. But Morgana's taken all the wizard jewels. It's my fault. I left them where she could get them. Oh, she mm -hmm. take all of the wizard jewels. Why did she leave this? She must think she doesn't need it anymore. Be careful, princess. The dark stone still has strong magic. I'll carry it for you. <laughs> now, I wonder if when they originally wrote the show that they knew that the Dark Zone was going to be a wizard and they already had that plan, so they just added that in when they did it. I doubt it. I really do. <laughs> but that's the only wizard tool that was there the whole time. Right. So, the time has come, Morgana. Now it is you who will spend eternity here while I rule the magic of Avalon. I heard her is so crazy. Who wants these jewels? My jewels. Stand back, wizards! These jewels are mine! By the magic of Avalon, we stand ready to defend all that is good! Jewel Riders! Merlin! 
Merely, is it really you? Yes, I've been here trying to turn all the magic to good. You have done well, my students. You have brought the staff of Avalon. The staff of Avalon? Give that to me! Fun story. Grandpa helped me make a staff of Avalon out of wood. The rest time it's presented, it looks like it's Excalibur. Mm -hmm. the Lady of the Lake. will control the magic. Whoever wields the staff controls that jewel. I've been ready for a thousand years. You will have to prove it, Morgana. The jewel must be forged. Will it be tuned to you or to me? Do you see, great wizards? One jewel for one ruler! Bow before the new queen of the wild magic! Queen Morgana! My students, the future will be decided in a series of magical tests. Are you ready? No! We're ready! Let it begin! The Garden Stone! The Wizard Jewel of Gardenia! I don't remember. Anything can happen here. This is where we found the garden stone. Uh-oh. What's that? <laughs> it's the unproduced toy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many children would actually want. I don't want this plastic chair to go around and have Morgana in. <laughs> I could have sworn Ian first joined them in this episode, not the one before. This is too easy. Tamara, use your heart stone. Let's go, Shadow. Magic of the heart music so sweet. Getting the song to knock right off their feet. <laughs> It's that same song that's been used since season one. <laughs> since the Northwoods. The mood of the episode. Exactly. <laughs> you know, just comparing this episode to like Revenge of the Darkstone in full circle, it's just such a vast difference. You know what I mean? As in, season one was vastly superior. <laughs> well, I guess if you want to say it that way, yes. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, you know, you like had a sense of like, oh, what's going to happen? Like it was actually like suspenseful, I felt, you know? Is this after she turned her friends back from stone or before? Um, it's after, yes, because that all happens in Spirit of Avalon. I guess that was supposed to be suspenseful, but I mean, no one's going to assume that Amran Fallon get permanently turned to stone, and that's how the show ends. Right. Or at least it would have lasted a little bit longer than, like, you know, three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I do like that they kind of recap and you go back to some of the original places. Um, you know what I mean? The unicorns have been our dearest and closest friends. Merlin said we must trust in our friends. Because it's some of those places that we enjoyed throughout the, se the second season, you know? Like the mystery island and the unicorn, be able the unicorns. Uh, can you hear me guys now? Yes, we can hear you. Oh. I can't. I can't hear it. I can't hear that. Well, we're only watching the episode and commentating as available. So if you have anything to say specifically regarding the episode, otherwise you can keep chatting. Right. Unproduced toys. Exactly. I was gonna say there's another of the unproduced toys. So 
to save the world by playing baseball. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Jewels left. Can this one turn the tide? The jewel of the sea. Last chance for mermaids. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> this is like the third time that we've turned into mermaids. Is there like a crossover special where Ariel comes swimming along? That's actually in yeah. our archive. I did an under the sea mashup. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have that power. I like Mermaid Morgana. It's very interesting. This is very Drake good joined them at some point, witch. or is this after that? Is it what? Is this after Drake was there? After Drake was where? Oh, no. Uh, I think Drake only shows up at the end of this. Oh, okay. Or Pac. Because I remember I felt so sorry for him when he saw Ian, and he was like, who the heck is that? I know, right? I'm like, really, Gwen? It's been five episodes that <laughs> you never told him? Yeah. Oh it has been at least five episodes by then. Stonehenge and the wild you magic. Me, and you will be destroyed. <laughs> this is the time, Stone. A very tricky little magic jewel. The only time we get to know what some of these stones are called. I actually think them that they actually wrote it into the script. Yeah, usually it's called whatever it looks like. Right. Tamara? I don't know. Only way is to try them. All right. Sunstar and I will try this one. What? Not without us. No sense in everyone getting lost. Princess, I highly recommend under the circumstances you stay here with me. Starlush is right. We need you here. Very well. But for a time stone, doesn't actually allow them to time travel. Does, oh, I guess it does. Well, it does because they go to the dinosaurs. Yeah, I see yeah. that now. I don't think but they, they don't the right do any, like, back to the future type stuff. No, but the only thing, I mean, that's really the only thing that they did was they went back to prehistoric because other than that, the other episode, she just used it to, or Tamara uses it to go to the tea party. Yeah, which had very little to do with time travel. <laughs> And it'd be cool if they could like meet their parents or like try to prevent Cal from capturing Merlin in the past or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, what did she look at that? Chris, did you ever even think of that? <laughs> what? I, I can hardly hear. Oh, um, Lisa's all like, why don't they just use the time stone to go in the in the back in the feud or in the past to stop Kale from throwing Merlin into the wild magic. Yeah, that sounds like a good fan fiction. <laughs> we should write. Okay, and this is what? Where are we? Wait, right, what was that? Oh, what? Pepe. Oh, Pepe. Oh, Pepe. 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 oh, he's just like, you should write it. Oh. <laughs> it's like Alice in Wonderland land. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is totally based on Alice in Wonderland. They're not right. even subtle about it. <laughs> Oh, delicious. Sit, sit. He even has a little oh, wow. sign on his cat, like from that matter. I've got an idea. Does it say that you can sniff out wild magic? Is it like five over four? Or something? I don't remember what. Oh, yes, yes, uh, something like that. Four out of eight. Yeah. There's a magic portal right near here. Oh, 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 it's here. Let me Why see. does it look so different now? <laughs> It is here! I'm in heaven! Please, doing heaven! 
Which one has a magic jewel, do you think? That one, that one. Oh, them bits, them bits, them magic bits. Thanks for your help, Dweezels. Y'all come back now, you hear? Somehow I they're southern not. now. <laughs> Y'all <laughs> come back. I did think it was clever that they made Weasel have the ability to smell magic. Mm -hmm. That's really Henry, great. I don't right? think I've ever seen that in anything else fine. that has magic in it. Right. They can sniff it out. We think that one is the right portal. All right. Sunstar and I are going through the next one. What, princess? No. I'm as much a part of this team as you are. Stay here, Archie. But, 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 but. That's an order. I'll go with her. Are you sure? Yes. All right. I sense strong about thin ice. So can I. I've hated that art of Morgana. That it's like such that a funny face. face. I always thought her face there looks so dumb. It's ridiculous. Oh, where's your chair? Oh no! I like how she's instantly in a cube. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's clear when all the other ice looks white. Right. We save one. Ooh, that face again. It's like that scene in Spider Man. Mm. That's the trouble with you, Jewel Riders. Always thinking of others first. That is your weakness and my strength. <laughs> Sunstorm. Oh no! What do I do? Right? I just lost him! We have to go! Let's go! Where's he? He's gone. He saved Sunstar. Oh my! I'm sorry, Starla. Come on. We're going back to deal with Morgana. But I mean, are we supposed to ship one with Ian after episode five or whatever? Because this is the only other time we've seen him. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> He's gone. She's very fickle. My child, life is full of challenges. This is but one more test for you. I grow weary of this. I call on the jewel of Arden. Well, it wasn't the ooze from Fern Gully. Your beast boy lived here, didn't he? Or what's left of it? We'll pay for this. Starla, no, that way isn't right, don't you see? Tamara, let go of me. That's it. Let your anger go. Starla, no! Princess, listen to your friend! I'll. I'll. No, this is not the way. Fire your sunstone! I'll never be like you. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're supposed to be in such suspense. It's so Maleficent with the girl saving the boy. Starla. Ian. Starla. <laughs> with the magic of a gnome, you have the most Yeah, they did the Sleeping Beauty reversal before a lot of other princess. shows did. Mm -hmm. All of Avalon stands with you. I think there was an episode of Xena. Who was it? Where there was an episode of Vina where they did like sort of a gay sleeping beauty 
were either she or Gabrielle had to kiss a princess or something. I don't remember exactly what happened, but mm. they also um, that came out around the same time too. Morgana! Silver Surfer Morgana. Exactly. It's like the Sun Power Guinevere special edition that's only for sale in North America. <laughs> Speaking of toys and North America, I do believe we've been joined by Greg. Hi, Greg! Hi, Greg! Hi, Greg! It's so shiny. Princess Starla, <laughs> it's up to you now. Only you can forge the jewel. Greg, we needed Silver Surfer Morgana as a special North American toy, like how we had Sun Power Guinevere. Yeah, I definitely have not seen this episode. <laughs> Boy, that's the final costume that we put on the final dolls. I forgot that that made it to the show. Yeah. Oh, was it not supposed to? No, I'm glad it did. Oh, okay. I didn't remember. The Jewel Riders outfits or the Morgana one? Uh, the Jewel Rider. Because they were wearing this for the whole season. Not the outfit that's showing right here. Yeah. For all 13 episodes of the second season, they were wearing those outfits. So oh, that's funny. Okay. That was the entire season that started out with their new Jewel Armor. Yeah, Robert never sent me the second season episodes. Oh. Greg, Greg hasn't seen the second season, really. He didn't oh. think too much. There's Drake. Yeah. They get to be part of the last 10 seconds of the show. <laughs> yeah. okay, I knew he showed up at some point. I just don't remember what it was. Mm. But I just remember. And what's like, going to happen? Was that when I met Ian, I felt so bad. Right. It's like, oh. Oh, Drake, no one told you. <laughs> the one jewel. It's like, did she collapse them? What happened? What did she do? There's an awful lot of jewels just make one jewel. Right. Archimedes, my friend. You have done very well, my students. Merlin, we've won! Morgana and the other wizards are gone! Darkness always returns. They can finally give him a real hug. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Not like when Tamara hugs him and then he disappears. So to tell you, this is like the only time that we see all the characters together, I think. My head, my students. Life is always a circle full of new beginnings. Let's go home. Let's go home with my new boyfriend. Oh, well, my Let old boyfriend standing right there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Let us begin again. It's the song of all songs. <laughs> I think the CGI in season two at the end was like slightly different. Like the moonstone was blue instead of purple. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like the CGI from season one a little better. I don't know why. Like, the jewels look a little bit more intricate. Right. And they certainly rushed things on season two because they weren't expecting to make season two. Oh, oh we noticed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I will open it up to the floor. So if anyone has any questions regarding something that we just saw or if you generally have questions, I mean, this is the time to do it. We have about 10 minutes. So Greg is with us, 15 minutes or so. So, Shell, what did you think? Jan, were you so excited? I'm still awake, so I guess that's something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, obviously, Lisa, I know how you feel, but generally, like, did you feel the climax, was it appropriate? What would you have done from a fan standpoint considering you wrote that blog about it? <laughs> I mean, I have really <laughs> nothing else to add. Um, I just like season one a lot better. And 
I, I like that they ended it like conclusively mm-hmm. because season two was bad enough and then if they just left it up in the air at the end that would have been even worse so it was nice that they gave it a complete ending where Merlin finally came back and everything got wrapped up and now there's no more problems in Avalon at least right, right now right I've always liked that part of it that there's a conclusive ending, unlike so many other 90s and 80s cartoons where it just goes off into oblivion at the end. Yeah, it's really (laughs) frustrating when there's a character who has a specific goal and then they never achieve it after, like, 50 episodes. Yeah. What happened with Samurai Jack, but then they ended that, like, 13 years later. But it's nice that we didn't have to wait 13 years to see (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, I mean, as we were saying, you know, it, it really is thanks to Stormy. So thank you, Stormy, because you are the one who gave us those episodes as we've said before you know here we are chris and i were like 12 years old and we're sending <laughs> cash to some random stranger on the internet to get videos. <laughs> my pleasure i think it's at least partly thanks to lisa because i think she gave me some of them yeah okay well i don't know lisa is that i don't think i had this one. Oh, okay but I, I might have had like one or two season one episodes mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, and recently, it's hard to find. Yeah. The um, well, the last three, like I said, I, I have no idea where these were released because at least everywhere that I had lived and recorded it from, they never finished the series, so we never really knew anything about it. But just randomly, you had, you know, three Guinevere episodes um on other channels. Um, there's been the Fortune Jewel and the um, Spirit of Avalon were released with Guinevere official audio, but we still don't have a good copy of one jewel unfortunately so greg you were talking about some of the designs that you had worked on in in season two i know that you didn't really get a chance to to see some of the episode but we were just discussing the fact that some of those toy prototypes were in this episode like the fallon with the wings on her shoes and and morgana's chair and of course the mermaids and some other designs as well i don't know if you had anything to really add into that it, it was fun to see. Hey, is my video not showing up at all? No, it's mm. not. Oh. oh, maybe I, I should turn the okay. light on. No, oh well. It's okay. Um, okay. Um, and actually, I'm sitting here with two young ladies that just got to watch Guinevere yesterday for the first time. Oh. And we're just sitting here watching this feel part of the episode. I've got Tina here who is just about ready to turn 11. Mm-hmm. And then I've got Mel here who's about ready to, who is eight right now. Oh, so welcome. Yesterday Glad they got the their first them. experience with Princess Guinevere. Of course, it's Princess Starla, what they saw. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, it, it was actually really fun. I, I you know, I, I, with that whole process, I had approved all the drawings of this and that and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I never saw the fully animated versions of those costumes. So- Oh, interesting. That was really cool. Um, and I'm, I, now I want to, it's like, okay, but I, I missed the scene showing Morgana as the silver surfer type of a thing. So <laughs> it's like, I, um, <laughs> I don't know, was that your inspiration when you were drawing that or when you sketched out the ideas? Well, certainly, certainly I knew silver surfer and did I have the toy by then or not? I don't know. Because, um, you know, from all, the, from all my times with comic books. And I can't remember. I, I know that I did those drawings that, that, uh, that, oh, wait a second. Hold it. Maybe we can get, nope. Oh, well, I was trying to see if there was a way for me to undo my, show my, my video again here. But, Sorry. Uh, I, I tried doing it. I can't, I can't do anything. Okay. Um, it was inter- yeah. It was interesting just to see that because I don't remember now in the process. I only remember that one drawing ever being made, that that made her, you know, in a flying chair like that. So mm-hmm. it's. I'm gonna watch the episode again. Well, even Which if you it can was see just on the, the website. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, but even if it was just that one drawing that you made i mean but you guys decided that you wanted to make it into a toy so i mean obviously something about the morgana chair influenced you and you wanted to do it yes i mean it i wanted her to be very different from what we did with lady kale Mm -hmm. and actually I, i was trying to remember and honestly i can't remember 
see if that does anything. Okay, I can't remember if I fully created that Morgana character design or if they did, because it's been a couple years. I do know if you look at the styling of it, it's very Greg. <laughs> so um, chances are I at least had the first one drawn and art directed the first one to be sent over there. Mm. But um, gosh, it was fun to see that. Awesome. Well, I hope you have a chance to watch the rest of the second season episodes. Yes. And um, let us know what you think. <laughs> That's very exciting that you haven't really seen them. You know, it was weird, too, because Robert used to send them all to me. And then and then after a while, he's like, well, those are on air now. You can just watch them there. <laughs> Good uh, luck. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Because then you have to go up <laughs> yeah, at 5 a.m. Exactly. and 6 a.m. and everywhere else. Fox, yeah, that, WB. It, yeah. And that, and that whole issue about, well, no one would tell you, you know, none of, none of the local stations or you know, TV guides would tell you when it was because <clears throat> Bobot never bothered telling anyone where it was going to be on. So, mm -hmm. oh well. It was, old. I mean, it was in my TV guide in the newspaper. I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to. Here's the problem is, is it's the job of the, what are they called now? A Distributor? Job. Distributor, thank you. It's the job of the distributor to let TV Guide and the newspapers know, hey, this show is at this is such and such time on such and such channel. But it bounced around a lot, mm -hmm. and Bobot never communicated that to TV Guide or anyone else. Mm -hmm. So half the time it was listed anywhere, it was wrong. And so, like Robert was telling me that he kept getting – emails and things from people saying, you know, Princess Guinevere's my, my daughter's favorite show and she can't find it. How do we find it? So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and then the people, so the, the executives at Kenner just was like, how did they email him? <laughs> they, they were really know. ticked off at Kenner. The wow. people inside Kenner going, really? We did this deal with these people and they can't even manage to get the TV show on someplace? Right. Ugh. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the only reason I knew it was on at 6 a.m. on certain channels is because whenever we got, my parents subscribed to the Star Ledger newspaper and there was like a little booklet that told you when all the TV shows were on and every mm -hmm. week it would be like a scavenger hunt and you'd scroll through every time and every channel looking for Princess Lenever and the Jewel Riders and that was how I always found it. Right. Well, and really the only reason why Chris and I found it was because we were such fans that we like went out hunting for it you know to be like well where did it go like let's find the time slot in the stations but yeah. i mean for the most I, part, I would also religiously look at those newspaper mm -hmm. uh tv listings <laughs> well you like know where's waldo exactly where's yes so greg i was just Magic writing a section quest. <laughs> for the book regarding the release and the reception of the show and kind of writing it, I think that I took a little bit of basically what you said about the fact that it seems like the toys were doing well on their own, but I think that this show would have been a little bit more successful had the distributor done a little bit better of a job advertising. Because, you know, I was talking about the fact that I watched a lot of TV and I never saw a commercial for it. Now we've seen commercials for it, you know, later because we've archived them, but I don't ever remember seeing a commercial for it. And Again, you know, the promotions, the tie-ins, things like that. Like, I think that the marketing team, they had some good ideas, but I think that there definitely could have been a little bit better of, I don't know, a job. <laughs> you know, they, oh, yeah. they, they could have. And actually, that was one of the things where the Hasbro management actually got mad at Bobot and said, you haven't promoted this. You have not followed up to what you said you were going to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why they finally put on some commercials. But... And, and in some of the ratings, it was like, you know, way high up in the ratings. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. But it shouldn't have been that high up, but it was. But they couldn't keep it consistent because people weren't following it. Right. You know, it right. just because it would dance around. Well, and like so that. they finally did those commercials um, because of Hasbro getting mad at them. And, and I remember hearing an interesting story that can't remember who told this, but Hasbro used to work with a company called Nelvana. And they did some of the distribution for, for many of the other Hasbro cartoons that they were involved in. 
And Nelvana actually, you know, commented to Hasbro about, you know, nice show, but no one's ever going to find it because you're working with Bobot. Ugh. Uh, they had yeah. such a reputation. It's so sad. Yes. Have they had a horrible reputation. For Amazing Adventures in general? Because it was on the Amazing Adventures blog for a while. Yes. But it's still, it still was the same basic problem where Bobot never would tell the the media, the, the printed media, when it was going to be and where it was going to be. Well, the reason I'm asking is because, like, at that time period, cartoons all had their own blocks. Like, there was the cartoon, but then it was part of, like, the Fox Kids block or the Kids WB block or, like, one Saturday morning. And those blocks had commercials, and the commercials would sometimes mention multiple shows mm -hmm. in the block. And Jewel Riders was part of the Amazing Adventures block, but I'm not sure I ever saw a commercial for that block. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I remember yeah. seeing, I think, a Sky Surfer Strike Force commercial. Okay. But I don't ever remember seeing an, a commercial for Jewel Riders. I don't even remember ever seeing a commercial for Tenko. And, you know, again, I think the thing is, is that we have that Nielsen ratings sheet, and it's saying about how well it does over, you know, um, Sailor Moon and Tenko, and it's doing this great thing. And the other thing is, is that when it was released internationally, I mean... I don't, and this is something, Greg, I don't know really what the international team was doing, but I mean, Starla, at least in France, was so much more well-received and I think did so much better, at least cartoon-wise, you know, than it did in North America. And yet we were the pilot show, essentially. So it's just, it's interesting. Like, I don't know what they were doing differently, but something happened, whether they had consistent but, showings or whatever. It's, it's because in France, uh, they are... Uh... They uh, very much, very much. Uh, 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 what Go on. I, 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 what? I don't know. You guys, you guys watched Guinevere. Uh, go on. Okay. Come on. So anyway, Greg, as we were saying, it's just it seems like Starla just was so much more you know, better, like not better, but it was just more well-received, I guess. More popular. Yeah. Was there a low budget for marketing for the show? Because that's what I always figured, just because it seemed like they had so much trouble marketing it. Mm -hmm. Well, it, once again, see, there, there's, there's, there's cartoon, or I'm sorry. The, so there's the marketing that Bobot should have done as the distributor, which didn't happen. And then of course, then there's the marketing that Hasbro did um, with their, with the cartoon show, you know, their, I'm sorry, with the, the commercials for the toys, which they did do. Um, so it just, it unfortunately was one of the partners was not doing what they were supposed to be doing. Um, and also typically in toys, but not always, typically they run it in the U.S. first for year one, and then year two, it gets taken up internationally. So that was the standard operating procedure at Mattel. And I know that, that Hasbro actually did put it out for the first year, or it was like a, it was, it was a later release, but I mean, you've seen the Starla toys and I know that I know they're out there because I I sold off one of them, one that actually said Starla on it. Mm -hmm. um, so they did ship, um, but it's kind of hard to do anything when it, when the TV show itself isn't getting shown. Right. And then right. and then of course they they pulled that rotten trick on Robert, saying we're going to stop promoting them at all unless you sell us all the episodes. Uh, yeah. Drama in the production center. Exactly. Mm, exactly. That's... And it must have been doing well enough for that for them to want to do that. So I it just it's really weird that you know the things that happened. Right. Right. Um, that reminds me of what happened to Walt Disney with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. <laughs> kind of. 
It does. Of, it does. I thought you were going to say it Disney is, with RKO. That's what I thought you yeah. were going to say. Uh, it's it's very similar to that situation. That you know, I guess most people know that situation now, but but that's yeah. And then and then Walt comes back on the train and decides he's going to you know make his own character, and it, it turns out to be a mouse. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we're going to be cut off by Zoom. So if anyone has any more questions, you can keep asking. But in case we get cut off, I just want to tell everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. I hope that you enjoyed watching the finale. And thank you, Greg, for, for being here to answer some of our questions. And everyone who joined, thank you for being here. Um, yeah. any, any last questions regarding the episode that we just watched for Greg before we all head out? No. We have two fans uh, here, and and Andrew, uh, what did you think? If if if, if I if I knew, I would prep, I would pre prepare my questions, but I don't uh, have it in my head now. Oh, okay. Well, you can <laughs> yeah. always send us an email. Um, and our social media, we had posted about it, and we said, you know, if anyone has anything, you can email us. So you can always email us, and we can get them answered for you later. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks everyone. We appreciate it. I hope everyone has a safe and happy weekend. And until we talk again, friends together. Friends, friends forever. forever. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. By the magic of the sunstone, you're tuned into the Jewel Riders Archive.